What's up, brothers? EBM, Escape Black Man. My Edmore brothers, Black MGTOW. You know, I was doing some thinking, man. I was watching this movie called, uh, what was the name of this movie? Midnight in Paris. Now, Midnight in Paris, I'm going to take my time with this movie because I, I was just peeping the game with this movie and all the pieces, man. And I kind of related to this character played, played by the one white guy with the crooked nose, uh, uh, Ian, or I forgot his name. He always played like the goofy kind of cool you know white dude he seemed like a cool cat and midnight in paris came out in 2011 brothers i want to talk about igniting your passions and environment this movie was about a man finding himself reigniting his passions and changing his environment. This is a, a phenomenal movie for you guys to watch. Brothers that are looking to travel overseas. Or just want some good mind feed. Something that you, know, you can see this whole entire game when you look at this movie. You you will see the dream. Th this movie has dream killer. The, the woman is a dream killer. It has how he changes his environment. And I took some notes here man. Uh, but he changed his environment, man. And I want to stay on task here, man, because I, I wrote a bunch of notes while I'm watching this movie, man. I, I've seen it before, but it was like I never really looked at it with a um, a really, really critical eye. But brother's environment. Change your environment, man. So one thing I noticed in this movie is, let me put a, also, let me go over these notes. The the horrible, unlived, dead life. Brother, sometimes you got to change your environment so you don't have a be a, a, a victim of the American society. Like I always say, brothers, when you think about it, what's here for us is black American men. What's here for us? GMO foods. Fat black women who don't respect us. We wear it. Police ready to shoot us and kill us. A violent culture. America is the most violent culture that it is. The most actively military, militaristic culture that it is in, in the entire world. Look at all of them. Who, got, who has more military bases than who polices the world? The country you live in, brothers. Us. What's here for us, man? Environment, man. And... This shit is not living, man. GMO foods. You have to go to the store to grab GM to grab non-GMO foods to feed your children. You have to filter your water so it won't be fluoridated with all those chemicals and shit. You have to go through all of these steps in order to get a clean way to live. A clean, clean foods. You have to buy organic. Why the fuck should you have to buy organic? Why shouldn't it just fucking be organic? This is where you live. You live where motherfuckers are walking around highly medicated, chemically imbalanced. Your women looking at green weave as though that shit is normal. Purple weave. And this shit is present. This is, this is living, nigga? This is living? Nah, bruh. And like I said, when you see, yeah, you're going to have problems overseas. You're going to have racism. you got going to have maybe a language barrier. You're going to have some shit that ain't going to be. The internet may not work as fast as it do here. You, you, you have to different things and stuff. You, you might not like how you got to go to the store. And you got to go further to go to the store and shit like that. You're going to have problems. You're going to have things that's not going to be, uh, you know, as perfect and all that stuff, bro. But this shit ain't living, bro. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed about the dude, Ian, in this, uh, I'm, I'm probably getting the dude's name wrong, but 
let me go, let me stay on task, man, and go through these notes. But I, that's one thing I noticed is that the guy was refreshed, man. When you, this movie was like, uh, I want to take my time. I watched it last night. I was a little bit tired. So I want to wait till the morning and do this video, man, so I would be able to really tell you about this movie. So what ended up happening is basically he was a writer, and I can kind of relate to this guy because, you know, I'm a you know, creative type of guy, you know, doing these vids and stuff. I feel like creative essence, you know, and basically he had lost his writer's urge, his writer's edge. And the woman that uh, he was with was such a, she was an American and she was an American white girl cunt, uh, demoralizing him, you know, oh, just demoralizing this motherfucker. And there was this dude that was there that was like, a past friend she had a crush on. So that, that's another note, brothers. Don't let your woman be around no dude that she had a crush on. And she was just, you, you could peep the game. She was just highly disrespecting this dude, taking a shit on his dreams, telling him that his dreams was literally kind of like child's play. Like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Because he was one, he was working on a novel and he wanted his novel to be, you know, good. And that's what he actually wanted to do. He was a writer for, you know, doing movies and stuff in Hollywood, but he wanted to, that's not what he really wanted to do. He really wanted to be a novel, create his own novel and be appreciated for his own specific work, uh, from his own essence. You know what I mean? So having a, doing a Hollywood script, you know, you just do whatever. I don't know the whole process and stuff, but Essentially, is not as creative as being a uh, your own writer, being writing your own novel and stuff. So he, his essence, his uh, flame, his desire was to be a novel writer. That's what he wanted in life. Yeah, he did writing movies and stuff, so he make some money. But it, you could see the whole difference between how between American consumerism and how. Uh, Man, it's just so much in this damn movie. And I don't want to take make this video too long, man. But it, when you look at it, man, and you peep the game of it, it's like this guy wanted a relaxed life where he can essentially reignite his passions and create his novel and be known for his novel. And that's what he actually wanted in life. But his he was about to get married to this chick. It was his fiance. His fiance wanted to get married, have a place in Beverly Hills and consume, 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 consume. The one scene, him and her, uh, her, her and her mother went into this expensive fringe. It was in Paris. Expensive uh, French, uh, you know, store with $18,000 chairs and shit. Nigga, $18,000 chairs? And so the mother was like, oh, he's just being cheap. It's a fucking $18,000 chair, bro. There ain't no chair worth no $18,000. You can buy a car for $18,000. You can buy a house depending on where you live for $18,000. It's about a goddamn car? Uh, 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 a seat, man? So you can see how women gravitate towards stuff. Just like Dave Chappelle has said uh, in one of his stand-up skits, he was like, Women basically want stuff and men basically want women. So our tests is basically each other. We want the woman, but the woman wants stuff. So the dude wants to acquire stuff to get the woman. Women are materialistic. They ain't really spiritual, bro. And he said, it's literally a dude will bang a chick in a cardboard box. If he, you know what I mean? But the chick, she want a house. Dude, I, hey, brother, hey. I mean, I, hey, outside, bro, in the, in the woods, you know what I mean? Easy work. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, or, you know, behind a building or something, man. That dude ain't worried about no damn car, but a female, if she ain't really digging you, she want more and more and more and more. And so this movie is about consumerism, man, and the dude refining his passions in life, uh, life man. And um, the good thing, if it's going to be a spoiler, so, you know, but the good thing is that, he ended up dumping a bitch and because he, he was just like, you know, I can kind of relate to that because I was in a foreign country just walking around and you just so this is what I'm talking about, soaking up the essence of the country, man. Just walking around, man, seeing little store owners and little, you know, 
different things, man. Just the environment, man. And that and sometimes the environment is what you need in order to reignite and reignite yourself, man. This is what I talk about, brothers, going overseas, man. Because in America, it's about consumerism, man. It's about, you know, GMO foods and, and, and you got to eat healthy and you got to go to the doctor. But the drugs that the doctor's giving you is making you damaging another part or making your blood thin or making your blood thicker. And that's damaging something else. And then you got to get a pill and a procedure for, to get rid of the problem that the drugs have caused. All that, this, boy, this ain't no fucking way to live, bro. You ever watched that movie, uh, what was it called? It was with uh, Michael Moore, and he had went to uh, Cuba to get, like, what was it? He, he To get medication. I forgot the name of the movie, but it was comparing different countries' uh, medical systems to America's medical system and the price. And so he had, Michael Moore, the uh, fat director, he had went to Cuba and other countries, and he went to Cuba, and one chick, she really needed an asthma pump. And over in Cuba, I think they got the asthma pump for like $1. Like, but the same exact medication over here in the States costs like probably 50, 60 bucks, man. So you're looking at the same thing, but for way less. Same thing, bro. So people overseas may not have the same amount of money and materialism and affluence that we have in America, perceived affluence anyway, because we all know this shit is borrowed dollars. B borrowed currency but man anyways man one thing i'm just gonna go through these notes man I, i'm just i'm passionate about this man because it makes sense man this woman was a dream killer she was just a consumer here it's amazing how you can see one person in an environment and they're totally not they're totally not, uh, that's why a lot of women want to go to Paris, man, because it's about, oh, yeah, we can go to this boutique. We can go to that boutique and spend money and buy French stuff. But you ain't, and then you got the guy, he's like absorbing the essence, the essence of the place that he's in. Then also, at the end of the movie, it was this chick, uh, this French chick. If y'all want to see, y'all, if y'all brothers having trouble understanding, if a woman liking you or not, look at the woman he ended up with at the end of that movie. That will give you, look how she looking at him, glazed over look, all into him. That's when a woman like you. That's just my opinion. Because, uh, you know, when a woman look at me like that, I know that's what's popping. Because you ain't got to put no work. You ain't got to do all that, man. Spend money. This woman already choosing. You got to look at that, the end of that movie to see a really good example about how, you know what I mean, if a woman really digging on you and stuff. But anyways, so he found love in Paris. Now, she, her being a woman and stuff, yeah, she's going to probably you know, be materialistic, but we ain't really, we don't really see that throughout that movie. You see his fiance though, man. She ended up cheating on a dude. So, let me go through here, man. He, This guy had the balls to live, man. Yeah, he gave up a job in Hollywood and stuff like that for living. He gave up, you know, Doing that over there for living, for the opportunity to live, man. You see what I'm saying? And the chick, uh, oh yeah, her name was Gabrielle at the end of the movie. She was she was feeling on a brother, on a old white brother. <laughs> you can see that glisten in her eyes, man. You could tell that the chick was choosing. But I, I really, I couldn't really, cause it was a lot of, we wasn't, too, it, I couldn't stomach how. His fiance, I forgot her name, Becky or whatever. I can't, I couldn't stomach how how disrespectful she was to this dude. She was disrespectful about him to her father, to her mother, to the dude that she had a crush on. The guy she had a crush on was a uh, kind of an instructor dude, a tour guide type of a person, and he was. So she looked up to him, and but her own fiance, she looked down. So if you got a woman that's putting you down in front of other people, bro, you got to get rid of that bitch, man. You got to have a boss to live. See, you got to be willing to leave these women. Don't you got to you got to put yourself in a position. You got to change your environment, man. If you a black dude, you go to Germany, you go to the UK or either other parts of Europe. Hey, look, man, to go to I showed y'all, man. To go, if you on the East Coast, you in New York, you can go to uh, you can go to Europe for like four hundred dollars, man. 
350, 450, somewhere around that. Round trip, bruh. So the question is, why spend $500, $600 traveling to, you know, Las Vegas or something when you can travel across the world? Be in a different environment. It's something about the environment, man. The vibes, man. The lack of materialism. The lack of bad food that you're eating. The actual air not being polluted by GM, uh, by uh, chemtrails, man. That's it. Environment, bruh. Environment, man. So, you know, it was, I couldn't watch all of it, but I love it. So what ended up happening is this, man. Throughout the movie, he ended up, he would go on his walks, right? And it was kind of weird, too. But how they flipped it but he would go back in time you know what i'm saying it was a, it was a weird thing because he would uh he would be walking and then like an old chariot came up with a horse and buggy and oh no no that, that happened later but uh, yeah, something like that you know old car like 1920s and shit and it would and this guy came out and hey come on come on so it was like these old well-known like mark twain and hemingway those kind of old well-known uh you know movers and shakers of society back in those days and it was weird it was, it was, it was weird man so he you never really found out whether this dude so it was kind of like it was like in his own brain his own mind he went back in time but did he you know what i'm saying it was weird man but it was basically <laughs> y'all gotta watch that movie it was it was uh it was a good movie man and so I can't even go into all of the... It was a well-crafted, well-written movie, man. I mean, he, the brother, the dude had moved. Uh, I was so happy when he dumped her, man, because he was like in that state of being like, well, we're going to get married. Well, I don't really want to... And then the question came up where, do you want to... Do you want to live in France or do you want to live in the United States? And he was like, well, I'd rather have a little place here in France. And then she was like, yeah, um, but we're moving to, she was like, yeah, well, we're moving to Beverly Hills and his job and this and that. And so the whole thing is you, you, as a man, many times the dream killer females do not want you to achieve what you want to achieve in life. She didn't give a rat's ass about his dreams and goals and aspirations, man. She didn't care. That's how women are, man. See, Women in general are like that, but uh, women in America are more materialistic, man. They more ball busting. All she did was bust his balls. Your dreams are is a, in the beginning of the movie. Two three minutes in, she's telling this motherfucker how he's living in a fairy tale land. Like he he he. She basically taking a real runny dump on this dude's dreams. Y'all gotta look at this movie, man. Dream killer women, bro. And she, uh, she was taking a, she was just, you know, white women is good at, oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, just cutting into you on a slide tip. It wasn't no slide tip with this man. She, he was just too stupid to see it. You know what I'm saying? And they got the right guy to play that role, because he always played that goofy, stupid character. But man, she was just your novel. Okay, yeah, you're still waiting on the novel. Okay, she's like, damn with his dreams, just fulfill my consumerism. And then when I'm tired of looking at you and banging the gardener and I have enough of your resources tied up through the courts, I'll dump your simple ass for another simp and extract resources from him. See, that's that's American society, bro. And looking at this movie, you could see that he was able to turn flip the switch, man. He said, you know what? Because he didn't get married yet. He was only a uh, fiance. So he didn't make that that deadly mistake, man. You know what I mean? If you're a dude with resources, I, I, this was a really good movie, man. This is this is an Ib Moore movie. Let's say a MGTOW. Ib, even though it's not a, he's a white guy and stuff, I'm looking at the principles. I'm looking behind the skin color and see the, the culture that we're in. You see what I'm saying? On this specific movie. It's, it's a really, it's a really good movie, man. This is a real, this is like a, a must watch for brothers like Black MGTOW and stuff, man. So, I don't know, man. I, I was just happy to see the dude follow his dreams, man. And you brothers should follow your dreams, man. So the, the women be completely over, overly critical of your what you want to do out of life. What you want don't really matter. We live in a culture where we're, what the man wants, like, literally does not matter, man. 
And uh, I was just happy when he got rid of that broad, man. And she seemed to have a, uh, a personal hatred for his inspiration. She seemed to have a personal hatred for his inspiration, you see? So you got to watch out, man. Don't let that pussy just block block your mind where you can't think about, you know, the, the total situation, man. Women are basically dream killers. And, oh, this is another point I got, man. This is another point. You, pro you brothers probably want to write this down. Never, ever, ever try to get a woman to understand your dreams. You understand me? Oh, if a woman like you, she going to follow what you said. But so far as what the essence of it, the essence of your dreams, don't tell her the stuff that means stuff to you is what I'm saying. Like, for example, if you want to you want to start a plumbing business. And you don't got to tell her why. and or Let's say step plumber. Let's say you want to start up a, you know, a music uh, company. You don't tell her why and all that stuff. Because my, my father was a musician and I'm really passionate about. Do not tell this woman your passions like that, man. Because women, once they know your passions and stuff, you give them, you give them ammunition to come at you. You know what I mean? So you got to watch that out how you engage these women. I mean, you tell them a little bit, but don't tell them the deep stuff of stuff that means something to you. You know what I mean? That's, you know, you, 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 the woman going to follow you, you know what I mean, until she don't like you no more. So then, when she don't like you no more, she going to start going at your dreams and going at your, your sensitive spots because she knows where you're sensitive at because you done told her where you're sensitive at. So don't never tell no woman the depths, the deep depths of your dreams. Tell her, you know, the surface stuff and let her follow and, and help you along. Yeah, and, and support you and stuff like that. But don't never ever try to give her the vision because women really ain't got no vision for the most part. They about material. They about how they feel. They about right now type of thing, man. As I said, the woman continuously dis, like disrespecting and dismissed his passions, man, and his inspiration. And and all, that basically all she was really trying to do. It's the same thing, man. She trying to. She don't care about his inspiration. She don't care about. He's just a utility to be used to help her acquire material stuff. That's basically how women think. Hypergamy, man. And I just I couldn't. This cunt was. I couldn't. I couldn't stomach the level of disrespect that continue continually issued forth from this woman's mouth, man. So let me let me go ahead back here to some of these man. Let me see some of these notes, man. I just couldn't stay how she just kept disrespecting this dude, man. But yeah, man, that's uh basically women have no patience, man. For the most part, I'm gonna put it like this, man. I got a few notes and stuff, but I'm gonna just keep this short. Basically, women in general, if they good looking and stuff like that, American women in general do not care about your vision and passion and they are impatient they are impatient why because they got you they got another dude that's looking at them or maybe they might have a boyfriend at the crib i'm talking about if they look good and that that, were, that reminds me of this one uh i was watching this gold digger prank if, if you guys don't know what a gold digger prank is basically pranking gold diggers like for example this guy had a the black dude he had a maserati well let me tell you the backstory this gold digger prank was basically that this black dude he had a back in the day his girl his asian girlfriend dumped him because his car was raggedy he had no paper so now when it comes to you know years later and stuff his internet business and all that stuff is working so now he has money he has a maserati you understand me so now he got that Maserati, the female. What ended up happening is he set it up that this chick would, uh, you know, he set the situation up so that he would meet his ex-girlfriend, Asian chick, up at this restaurant or something like that. Well, he would meet her while she was coming up out of the restaurant. And then he was like, oh, hey, you know, hey, what's up, Ming, you know, Ming Lee or whatever. And she was like, oh, hi, uh, Jerome, how you doing, you know? And so she was like, "It's it's uh it's uh is uh, is this is it uh 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 is that your car? Oh yeah yeah you know man you know I've been working in internet business and stuff things been going good you know what I mean? And so he ended up you know asking, "Hey you wanna you wanna go for a ride?" She was like, "Uh yeah 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 sure yeah," you know. 
The bitch ain't got no shame, you understand me? So now she's like, wow, this this guy is forgiven. He forgave me for dumping him for having a raggedy car. Now he's going to let me back into his life because he, he's a simp. That's what she's thinking. So the, the gold digger prank basically ended that he got revenge. He basically said, uh, nah, I still remember how you treated me. Basically, uh, bitch, fuck you. And he drove off in his Maserati. You see, you got to understand, in that example, women don't really... Good looking women in this culture don't have really no loyalty. They got too many options. It's like they're only as faithful as their options. And they got shit loads of options. You see what I'm saying? So they ain't going to be that faithful. They ain't going to be dedicated for the most part. Women, I ain't saying if you got a good woman, like I said, man, that's a disclaimer, man. But I'm just saying, in general, women only really are faithful as they believe that their options are. Now, you got some good character women. But that's not the majority. Majority of women in America are allowed to be hypergamous and follow after their desires and financial goals, sexual goals, whatever they want to do. That is the majority of women, regardless of race. And so it was fun. That, that was that gold digger prank, man. But that's what I mean by women are impatient. They don't really, they don't really got no vision and stuff, man, for the most part, especially uh, a woman like here in America, man, she just all about money and material, man. And she has the opportunity to dump this guy, jump to the next one, or keep that guy and use him and use the other guy and use the other one. All oh, that's all you see is bitches on their phones. Texting. Texting the next next penis that they'll come by and bring money. That's all these women do. Of all races. And so basically, man, that that's how that married in Paris stuff, man. That that uh, the name of this movie. What was the name of this movie? Let me see. Let me go back up here. I forgot it. But a uh, night. Yeah, it was a midnight in Paris. So midnight in Paris, man. It was a great movie. 2011 movie, dude. It was a. I'll watch it again, man. It just even seeing in the beginning of the movie they had the pictures and the videos of the different scenery. See, it's something about. It, 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 I don't know, man. It's a difference, bro. It's 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 different. Like, for example, everywhere you go, even inside of this country is different. Like, all of America is not the same. Because remember, Hawaii is considered America, right? But why do people go to Hawaii? Because it's a different environment, right? It's a, but it's part of the country. Alaska, you know, they like going up there and see the Alaskan lights and all that stuff. And fishing is probably really, really good and stuff. They like, they like being in a different atmosphere. And so... He just changed his atmosphere to France, man. I'm so glad that the dude, I thought he was going to be a, a simp, weak dude, man. But the thing I found out and I seen in this character is that his desire to be himself and to be the best version of himself, his desire to be the best, to do what he wanted to do in life was more important than his desire for sex you see what i'm saying that, that's how that's how it gotta be brothers your desire to be the best that you could possibly be in life and be the best version of yourself need to be way more important than any one particular bitch period man if not then her desires are going to become your desires and she gonna break you and your things that you've been wanting to do in life you ain't gonna reach them because you're gonna be like a carrot you're going to be a horse following a carrot on a stick. And she's going to be in control of the carrot on the stick. And you'll be following her instead of following your dream. She's going to be going left. And you need to be going right. Right towards the direction of your dreams, man. So don't never follow a woman, man. Because she ain't really going nowhere except towards consumerism. And that, that don't really go nowhere. I mean... Anyways, man, I like having nice stuff and stuff like that. But don't, I'm not saying don't buy stuff. I'm saying that don't follow a woman. Follow your own dreams, bro. And if a woman don't support your dreams, you got to get rid of her. Just like he did in the movie. Got rid of her. So I found this a very inspirational uh, movie, man. And uh, let me go Let me go to another one of these points here, man. But uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, when you watch that movie, you'll see there's a guy with a beard, white dude with a beard that she kept continuously praising her dude that she had a, a crush on back in the day, she kept continuing. He just, 
She just happened to run into him in Paris and shit and got dug out by him. Cause you can tell, man, if a woman is on the verbals and she disrespecting you verbally and stuff in front of people, ooh, man, oh, man. She already probably cheated on you, man. And she doing little quick, quirky, ball-busting cunt comments in front of people. Man, she probably already done cheated on you. She just trying to, she trying to get, she trying to get her contract uh, uh <laughs> Uh, cancel around this motherfucker. She just hoped that you smart enough to see it. Because some women don't just come straight out and say. So he, she eventually admitted to cheating on him and stuff. But at the same time, she was like, yeah, I cheated on you. But let's put all that behind. Let's hurry up and get back to U.S. And let's go do our thing. I'm like, you cheated on him, but uh, let's get back to Let's just go back to U.S. And we'll talk about all that when we get back. I'm just, but so many guys would be a bitch. Oh God, that's another thing, man. You got to be willing to lead these women, bro. So many guys, the woman cheat on them. Oh, we already worked that out. You know, we uh, we talked about that. You know, and you know, she said she wasn't gonna do it no more. And nigga, how you gonna be with a woman that got dug out by another dude, man? How you gonna be with a woman that have opened herself up to another dude? Well, at least while she with you, you know. And it's a difference between you not knowing and you knowing. Like any any of our women could be cheating on us. We don't know. When she at work, she could be cheating. When she at home, she could be cheating. We don't know. When she at the grocery store, backseat pimping behind a dumpster. We don't. Women, hey, you you cannot know when a woman is going to cheat. That's just the bottom line. Niggas talking about they got the, oh, got my woman on lock. Nigga, you ain't got your woman on lock. You got your woman on lock as long as she want to be up on lock. But really, it's all still predicated upon her. If she don't want to be locked down no more, then she will have you removed from her life. It's really that simple. Now, if you got a woman of morality and or that really really likes you. The thing is, no woman can be kept unless you want to be kept. This is America. And so, you know, the whole thing is that you can't, why would you be a dude that would take a woman? That you, as black men, we got to understand power, property, and territory. You're supposed to be cool being a cuckold or like, uh, uh, you know, uh, sharing your woman. Or, oh, yeah, you know, and oh, yeah, she can allowing your woman to go dance with another guy oh yeah Buffy you know that's that white people stuff man sure she can dance if she wants to they're just dancing yes his groin is against her buttocks but they're just dancing yes he's holding her on her sexual parts of her body but they're just dancing you understand me so you know, yeah, so anyways man uh I'm just happy that but that, that was my opinion of that man I'm just you know I don't like that whole Yo, she cheated, but uh, we worked it. I ain't no working that out, man. That's it. What more she got to do to disrespect you, man? You cheated and we worked it out. You ain't working nothing out, man. It's already done been worked out. The next, the, the next guy already done worked it out. There is no fixing that. Anyways, man. So this chick was like, "Oh, well, we'll talk about that later when we get when we get back to the United States. We well, don't talk about that later. It's over." I'm just glad the dude had the balls to dump this bitch, man. But he would have been a complete pussy if he married her. But how many guys are like that? So, this is a very inspirational movie. He dumped the female so that he could be about his dreams. Basically, man, bitches ain't shit, man. When you really look at it, when you really put the pieces together, women is basically supposed to follow your program. And it's always a power struggle as to who going to follow who. And so you follow your dreams. And if she, you got to look at your, like I said in the previous video. All women are side chicks. You got to look at your dreams and your passions. And see, this is a wonderful movie, man. You follow your dreams. You follow your passions. And if the woman, and the woman, a lot, your woman a lot of times try to look at your passions and your dreams as another woman. So she's jealous of your passions and your dreams because it's going to take, number one, it's going to take time away from her and attention away from her. Also, she knows how bad she has been treating you. So if you achieve your dreams and passions, she has a really good belief that you're going to dump her ass, which you probably will. Will do. So that's why she has a vested interest into not allowing you to acquire your dreams. Basically, man, bitches ain't shit. But good women is good women, but bitches ain't shit. This cunt that was up in uh, up in this movie, man. Yeah, excuse my language. Yeah, you know, but it, it is. You see that in regular life. That's the thing that piss you off. You see these dudes being in the same predicament, but yet they don't have the balls to uh, 
remove themselves from this very toxic relationship with this female. So anyways, massive consumerism. All, uh, let me see here. What I write down? <laughs> but it's basically massive consum uh, consumerism here in America. And uh, basically America is basically a consumer society. And women just want you to basically consume, consume, consume. And I'm so glad in this movie, this is a perfect MGTOW type of movie, man. Ibmor type of movie, bro. EBM, Escape Black Man. This is a, just put a black dude face as opposed to the white dude. And you will see this dude was about energy. He was about passion. He was about environment. He was about reigniting his desires for life and what he wanted to do. And he had the guts to get up and do what he wanted to do. And that takes courage, man. Especially when you believe you're going to lose your quote-unquote gift of pussy. You believe you're going to lose this quote-unquote gift female. And see, that's the main thing, man. So, to have the balls to say, you know what, fuck you. I don't care what happens. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do me. Bye. And it, see, that's why you don't really want to get married nowadays as a, uh, as a black man in America. Because... It's not really advantageous to you. This is a consumer society. Women have too many options. It's just not really here. Being married here? Nah. I would say, brothers, if you want to marry in another country, just make sure that the woman can't tie up your finances and resources and you'll be straight. But I wouldn't suggest no no black man get married here, man. Not no more, bro. Because these women are... It's more so the culture it just allows women hypergamous nature to just flourish, man. But this is a great movie. Again, Midnight in Paris, the year 2011. It's an older movie, but quite honestly, man, the main point is, brothers, you got to change your environment. Change your environment. So that's one of your main solutions, man. Number one is figure out what the hell you want to do out of life. And then go to, number two, go to an environment that's going to be, it's going to fertilize your desires. It's going to reignite what you want out of life. If you want to start some kind of online business or whatever it is you want to do, go to an environment and don't stay where you at just because you getting some, you getting laid, you getting some pussy. You can get pussy. You and well, you in the movie at least you had seen that he got laid by a good looking uh, chick at the end. It's all it's, it's more chicks over there. So and more good looking chicks women don't have the option it's just a numbers game as I always say brothers environment 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 location 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 uh, uh, that is what basically what it is man it's not just this is what I say is like it's not just about getting pussy you understand me it's about environment and power and energy you know what I'm saying so when you're in a different environment you got less stress if think, think about it. You're not really living if you have to get up, go to work, spend all this time in, in, in living to earn money so that you can live to earn money. You're not really living. You're not really living if you have to go to the doctors all the time because you're sick, because of the food making you sick. And then because the food made you sick, you got to get certain medication. And that medication started you to internally bleed. So now you got to get a surgery. And that surgery, and then your insurance is too high. That motherfucking insurance is... You're not covering this, so you got to come out of pocket with it. So now you in debt. You know what I'm saying? This, this shit ain't fucking living, man. We got to spend extra amounts of money in order to be he eat healthy. You know what I'm saying? Where the majority of your food's killing you, man. This ain't living, bro. I mean, you know, so anyways, man. This is my... Uh, I'll keep you guys... Because uh, I plan on getting up out of the country pretty soon, man. I'm going to have to show you guys overseas man I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna get a better camera than I than used last time I just used my cell phone but and uh, I'm gonna take my time and do more videos and stuff but yeah man it's it's about environment brothers you gotta change your environment bro and uh, if you guys are interested go ahead like share and subscribe but definitely brothers environment 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 man you know what I mean? And never live the horrible, unlived, dead life. Regrets. A life of regrets is not a life. Hey, man, I did stuff. You know, I'm going to put it like this, man. There's a saying. Uh, I forgot who. I think it was Mark Twain. He said, you'll care more. You will. 
in 20 years, basically, you'll, you will uh, be more disappointed by the things that you did not do as opposed to the things you did do. That's a powerful wisdom. You'll be more disappointed by the things you did not do as opposed to the things that you did do. Peace, brothers.